Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Boston, and I am joined here today by my wonderful co-star, Paul Campbell. We are so excited for you to see our new movie, Dating the Delaney's, as part of <laughs> Fall into Love. <laughs> Uh, we have a couple questions that Hallmark has sent our way that we're going to be answering. So let's get started, Paul. Shall okay. We? Yeah. All right. So in Dating the Delaney's, my character Maggie is a single mother who runs a successful bakery business and is starting to date again. I'm nervous to put myself back out there. And I turn to the PR executive, played by the wonderful Paul Campbell, Michael. Um, can we share why viewers will connect with the storyline? Um. I, I have an answer for that. Can I go? Yes. Uh, the, this is a unique storyline for both of us because, but, but for the first time in, in certainly in my career, and I think in yours, we're both playing parents. We're like, we find ourselves parents of teenagers, young teenagers. And what was so unique, I think we, we both agreed on this, was that we both are picking up this love story later in life where we've experienced all sorts of heartache and heartbreak. Uh, I'm a widower and, um, and Maggie's a divorcee. And so we're, we're engaging in a really different way. And I think a lot of people that are probably our age have experienced something similar. We all understand loss and, you know, heartache and desire. And, you know, we, we're, we're all sort of, a lot of people find themselves at this age, looking for love for the second or third time, perhaps. And I think it's relatable in a way that maybe a lot of previous movies haven't been. Absolutely agree. And and for Maggie, uh, my character, it's it's a story of three generations. My grandmother, I mean, my, not my grandmother, my daughter's grandmother is finding love. My mother's finding love. I'm finding love. And my daughter's finding love all at the same time. And so I think that's really inspiring to, um, to watch three different women in chapters of their lives figure out um, how to keep their hearts open and, and to love again. And I think um, what I loved, I mean, when I first read the script, I truly, I was so excited about the story to tell about three generations. And I thought, Michael is Paul Campbell. I'm like, oh gosh, I should, like, I just so hope. And then I got the call that it was him. And so to be able to work together, we are both parents in real life and now. Kind of dorky, <laughs> kind of dorky, kind of goofy, kind of sweet. Yeah. Um, but also, I think getting to reunite and work together in this, because um, we have we've filmed a movie called The Last Bridesmaid years before. And so for this one to bring us back together and to have the depth to explore what our characters have gone on, I thought that was um, that was really fun. So I think people that are looking for second chances, um, my character is, is definitely taking care of so many other people. And it's the first time I think she really takes a step back and asks what she wants for her life. And I think for And women, how terrifying for anybody to do mm -hmm. that, finally. You yes. Know, to go, what is it that I want? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's scary. And do I ask for it? Sorry, I cut you off. Go no, ahead. You I'm were going to say something very did. poignant. <laughs> so did you. Um, well, so we, uh, that's, I think that's what we both, we both loved about the storyline. Yeah. You want to ask the next one? I do. Let's All see right. what's written down here. Okay. Both of our characters are having trouble entering the dating scene and decide to go on a pretend date to help with the jitters. Uh, without giving too much away, can we share how they help each other face their own fears? Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. We, the jitters. <laughs> well, my character has not been on a date in 20 years because I got married very young and started a family. And then I've been so busy being a mom and focusing on being a businesswoman that the idea of dating is just overwhelming. And so a friend suggests that I join a dating app. And while I'm looking at this dating app, Michael walks up and catches me, and I realize he's also on it. And so he kind of teaches me the ropes, but not very actively on it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I've got a toe in the water, but I'm uh, I'm not really engaging too much at this point. But the idea of getting online to meet someone that you don't know and how you connect and how you present yourself, those were all things that we were both very nervous about in the film. And so to connect with each other and both be, it's, it's, it's more fun to be nervous together, I mm -hmm. think. So <laughs> that, was, uh, that was our journey in the story. It's true. And I think there's such vulnerability, you know, maybe particularly when you're in your 40s and, you know, you've like... Maybe your self-confidence that you had in your 20s is not quite the same. Uh, you know, putting yourself out there and really saying, do you like me? Am I likable? Am I someone you could see yourself spending time with? What an incredibly vulnerable position to be. And of course, people are nervous getting back into the dating game. You're like, I don't know. Do I still have it? Uh, 
Maybe I'm a little soft around the middle. Maybe I'm not quite the person I was in the 20s. I don't know. You really are laying it all out there in a way that you don't have to professionally or with your kids. You're going, am I enough? Am I someone that is likable? Do I have value in this world? Um, so they, they decide to go on a pretend date uh, to just sort of see how they do, to see if they can get their footing and see how they respond in what would be a dating environment. I think it's a pretty good idea, actually. And we have such a history. So to be with someone that makes you comfortable, and that's really what the story's about, too. It's like, how does the day-to-day, -day, besides just the, the fantasy romance that maybe our kids are looking for, like my 16-year-old daughter has this idea of what her first boyfriend's going to be like. Um, but the two of us were like, well, we have similar values. We're on the same page. We're and... both lonely. <laughs> 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 and sometimes it takes going on a few really interesting dates, which my character goes on to figure out that love is just it's right here, Paul. Yeah, it's I right didn't here. need to go on any other dates. <laughs> I, uh, I just kind of had those pretend dates with you and kind of figured it out. But anyway, <laughs> without giving too much away, we'll see how it ends. <laughs> end up together <laughs> all right number three so while maggie was trying to find the right suitor for herself she also helps her daughter with her school crush rachel what do you love most about the mother-daughter relationship rachel what do you love most about the mother-daughter relationship oh, thanks for asking paul <laughs> um well what i loved about it for me is that my daughter was on set while we were filming this and so just to picture you know, the journey I have ahead with her and the, the wisdom you hope you can pass down and to have it so beautifully written in a movie gave me some confidence that I'll be able to navigate that in my own life. But I think connecting when you have been through um, a lot of you've had many different experiences in love and you're able to pass that down to your child, encouraging her to date someone with integrity who makes her laugh as opposed to maybe the flashier person at school that isn't paying her as much attention, which happens in this story. Um, I think really getting to the heart of what love is, what matters in a partnership. And we had some scenes where that was really able, what we were able to communicate. And um, she's fantastic. Um, my daughter in this film yeah, and, and my great. son, it was like to work with two such talented actors who just brought so much heart. Truly, um, yeah. So that was really, I thought that was um, just getting to, to play those scenes. And then I would go back to my trailer and there was my six month old baby girl. And just to realize the journey that. Not that nearly I, as good an actor though. She just like, she'd cry through she all smiles. the scenes. She didn't cry, but she would smile a lot. I she think smiled through her, all the scenes. That Wait, that's my trick. MO. That's you, she just smiled through all the scenes. Yeah, he was teaching her acting lessons on the side. I'd walk in, she was just smiling at me. So Yes, yes, good. Right into the camera, good, good. That's now away it, from the camera, that's away it. from the camera. <laughs> Um, what about you? What did you enjoy about your father-son relationship? Well, it's interesting in this movie because actually I, I probably spend as much time hanging out with your son as I do with my mm -hmm. own. I didn't have as much parental interaction in this one. A lot of my world sort of lives in your world and my son was around, but I felt like, um, you know, I have a six-year-old son and it didn't, I don't know if I just wasn't playing it differently, but it didn't feel different. I just went, I understand the love between a father and a son and that affection. And you, I think I'm still going to be speaking to my son when he's 14, the way that I speak to him now, I call him kiddo and I give him hugs and kisses. You know, I'm like, I hope that never changes. Uh, the young man that was playing my, my 14 year old son was like, I don't know if you can call me kiddo anymore. And I was like, yes, I can. Kiddo. <laughs> but, you know, like I go, I think that relationship, maybe never changes as even to be a dad in this movie to feel like a dad I got away with a lot of dad jokes so just, many dad jokes just because I'm a dad and it's permissible <laughs> and I'm just entering the world of mom jokes so he really helped yeah. Encourage me along. I'm but sort of a guru when it comes to those. You you are. And he's a phenomenal father. I think that was what was really nice about seeing, you know, both of our dynamics with our kids. And then Paul would be like, oh, I got to FaceTime my son. <laughs> he's going to bed now. And he would run out. And it's like to to be able to bring those worlds like your personal and professional and put that into the Yeah, there's not a lot of like acting like this one. That. Not a lot of acting. Just <laughs> show up and be myself. All, All right. What do we got? Uh, yeah. Number four, Michael not only helps Maggie feel more comfortable in her own skin, but builds up her confidence. If we were to give our characters any dating advice, what would that be? Oh, I think trusting yourself, trusting your instincts. Sometimes Maggie would give someone a second chance that, you know, second chances are wonderful, 
but you, we learn throughout this film that um, when something doesn't feel right, it it usually isn't. And go with your gut. Go with your gut and um, have fun. I mean, I think that's and watching her kind of get back out there and figure out what makes her laugh and realizing it's you. It was a good. It was a good journey. I also think just being completely authentic, like mm -hmm. regardless of what your shortcomings are, because you know when you want to find that person that accepts you fully for who you are, good, bad, and ugly, and all those things. And if you're if you're trying to be someone you're not, it gets sticky down the road. You know, if you're like, well, actually, I'm kind of more like this, and then you know, it's it you it is a foundation of trust from the outset. And if someone doesn't accept you fully for all your quirks and all your all your um, I don't know, peccadillos, then... Oh, peccadillos. Yeah, yeah, then, you know, you shouldn't be with that person. It's true. It's true. And I, I get to bring some humor to that because I, at first, don't know how to date. So I just agree to go to places and do things that I have no idea. You heard there was going to be free food. <laughs> you're like, you're paying, right? Okay, right. <laughs> All right, number five. Our characters connect over wanting the right partner that will fit with their lifestyles without giving too much away. Um, do we each have a favorite scene that we can share from the movie? I do. I, my favorite scene is the first time it's, there's a sequence where we first go on this pretend date and the, it, it is, there is such a lovely, sweet awkwardness. These two people in their late thirties or whatever, however old you are, you know, just trying to like, trying to be cool, trying to be like, you know, and just kind of failing a little bit, <laughs> kind of goofy and awkward. And uh, it, it's just so lovely and sweet. And that whole sequence from the pickup to the date, to the drop off, mm -hmm. um, and then not knowing what to do when you get to the door because the pretend date actually felt a little more intimate than you expected. And maybe there are some feelings there and you're, you're like, well, good night. I probably want to kiss you, <laughs> but it's not appropriate. It just, that whole thing was really, really fun for me that was our, our first pretend date was a blast and it's like we're both so not cool it kind of became cool together yeah <laughs> like, no i don't know if it ever became cool maybe not it was <laughs> but it is just those those awkward pauses and moments where you're like this feels like a date even though it's we're friends i'll see you tomorrow it's yeah. cool but um well her cohort keeps saying there's no such thing as a pretend date and uh you, we kind of figure that out pretty quickly mm -hmm. you know you're like what's the what's the difference here you're connecting organically, so what's the difference? But he made me laugh. I mean, most of it, you'll see a lot of, um, in this film, we have a lot of improv back and forth. Mm -hmm. of, um, and I think that's kind of what uh, what you hope for in, um, in a pretend date, for sure. That's yeah. what we were going for. We're like, let's add some of that in. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, so Matt, is this my turn? Yeah, Do I get to read six? Go, go, go. Okay, Maggie gets an opportunity to talk about her business on TV and Michael steps in to make sure she's prepared. Was there a moment in our lives where someone helped us achieve a goal? Um, man, I wish I had an answer for this question. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I've had a lot of people along the way, you know, I've, I've dabbled in so many things and I seem to have always had someone championing an idea or something like that, particularly at Hallmark, as mm -hmm. I sort of started to get into the writing and having different executives get behind what I was doing and different directors and producers, just people that are always kind of going, yeah, you can do it. Go ahead here. I'll listen. I'll sit. And yeah, oh, we'd like you to, you know, there's always somebody kind of giving you a little bit of boost. And I found that more later in my career than earlier. Mm -hmm. And as I started to, to actively try to achieve goals, as opposed to let things just happen to me, I was like, oh, I can actually carve my own path here. And it's extraordinary how much help you find along the way if you're just willing to ask. Well, and you're such um, a success story as far as when we were working on, <clears throat> I'm so excited about this. I'm like, I've got to properly <laughs> take speak a minute, this. Take a minute. Um, <laughs> it's we overwhelming, were working on I know. The Last Bridesmaid, he had ideas of, he was like, I really want to start writing. And these are a few projects that are just in my head. And then cut to, we work on our next movie together this year. And he's already written so many films that are already out busy. there that the world has gotten to see. So <laughs> you are someone that like sets a goal and achieves it. And I think that's, that's not without help though, for exactly, sure. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think for, for me working with Hallmark, the beauty is there's so many women supporting each other. Mm -hmm. And I think there's such a team of strong, dynamic, brilliant. And you just, you just have so many from just every aspect um, across the board. And 
and Hallmark um, in, from our executives to publicists to our social media team to the actors that I work with, you just see the support system. So I think finding a home and I think that's hopefully we'll get to tell more and more stories about that. But I think when you find your tribe and you find a group of people that want to uplift each other, I find that incredibly inspiring. So I agree. I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, we really do have an, an incredible community here. Uh, of people that really are just out to help each other. We all sort of help each other up. It's, I think it's pretty rare. I do too. Um, all right, do you wanna read the next one? I do. Uh, <laughs> Maggie signs up on a dating app and calls herself the cool mom MD. <laughs> if we had the opportunity to create our own profile on an app, what fun nicknames would we call ourselves? Oh man, I think that was one of the funniest. It's, you know, my, my initials, my name is Maggie Delaney and the fact that I, Everyone says people are going to think you, you're a doctor. And she's like, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'll just roll with it. Which we'll is find so out horrible. <laughs> so misleading. I'm okay if people think I'm a doctor. I actually run a bakery. <laughs> but to go on dates with people who were just like, I was so intimidated that you were a doctor. It's like, I'm not a doctor. It doctor pastry. <laughs> um, but I think that would be, what would your what would your online dating profile be, Paul? No. Come on. You give me a name. <laughs> you first. Your, your smiles for miles. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're um you're uh little miss sunshine you gotta give me a name i can't name my, i'd be like johnny fun time or something like that <laughs> give me a name his uh his name for we we were in a um competitive we did this funny trivia game together and paul named us the ding dongs i wouldn't give you that on your dating app but that's the kind of i would have to swoop in to save you be like johnny you ding dong <laughs> I think if you add Johnny in front of anything, it makes you instantly cooler. Like, I'm not Ding Dong, I'm Johnny Ding Dong. <laughs> Super dad pun. Super 42. dad. 42. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Punderful. <laughs> Mr. Punderful. <laughs> that is it. I'm not getting Any a lot of ladies bits. out there, just for kicks, yeah. if you want to see if there's a Mr. Punderful. My inbox is to... woefully empty. <laughs> We probably need to save that just in case any either of us need it. Little Miss Sunshine and Mr. Punderful. Smiles from Miles. <laughs> Smiles from Miles. I want that one. That's you. Okay. Oh, will you read this one? Oh, what? I, I thought think. I just read. Okay. Do I read the next one? Uh, fine. You can do the last one. Our characters decide to go out with each other to help them feel more comfortable with dating. If we had to choose our perfect date, what would we like to do? Ooh. What's a perfect date? A perfect date. Well, I, you know, we talked a lot about in this movie what romance is versus partnership and companion, like how to find a, a companion that you just love to be with. And it was mm -hmm. sometimes the most basic, simple days that we had together, like watching our kids play sports. There were, that was some of the most romantic because you're, you're on the same team. I agree. Literally, oh, that was sort of on the same team, get it? So kids are on the same team. <laughs> <Hold> <laughs> But I, 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 I think um, that was that was something that we really talked about. I'm a big fan of the beach. I think we could okay some romantic beach sunset. Again, like I think you could do you could do all these really like activity based dates. But honestly, it is so much about connecting. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you can find a quiet spot, like if you can sit on the beach, uh, go have a drink. Like go and sit and actually chat over a drink. Have a have a meal, go to a park, anything like that where you can really just connect with the person. Um, I'm going to a movie, it just like you're sitting there and you're not talking to each other, right? Like it's a it's an experience that you can kind of do on your own. Uh, maybe like for a first date, certainly somewhere where you can actually sit quietly, not a bar where you're yelling over people. I don't know. I'm not terribly adventurous, so <laughs> I, I don't know. What a crummy answer. <laughs> I think it's very sweet. Mr. Wonderful just <laughs> falling apart here. That's going to be your, um, that's part of your bio though. Yeah. Quiet, peaceful park days. I feel like you'd get a lot of, uh, a lot of support. I'd get a that. lot of silence. Just want a long conversation. Yeah. In long conversations park. in the park. <laughs> My inbox is empty. <laughs> I have so many puns to share over this sparkling water. <laughs> Uh, okay, here's one. If we had the opportunity to start our own bakery, what delicious treats would we want on the menu? Uh, baked, baked goods. I'm going to say anything. Cookies. I'm an, I'm a cookie person. I will I will leave everything else. Cakes, pastries, all of it can go away. Donut. 
donuts can stay. But cookies are my absolute, like you put cookies in front of me and I, I can't resist. I'll just, I just dump the whole thing in my face. <laughs> I think if we could open a bakery that just had perfected the chocolate chip cookie, let's Ooh. keep it simple. Maybe a few variations. We don't need a bunch of nuts. We don't need just the chocolate, the perfect chocolate chip. Um, we could do cookie cakes. Okay. Well, I don't even know what that is. Is it just like a giant it's a cookie? giant cookie. And instead oh, of a cake, good. it'd be delicious. Right. And so we can just, we have a very specialty. And then we can also, for the, the cookies that we made on the show, we could have a little tag that was like, as seen on Dating the Delaney's. Yeah. We could be huge. Those cookies were extraordinary. They were so good. I didn't make them. We filmed yeah. at a real bakery. <laughs> this like really beautiful bakery. And the owners just decided to whip up these cookies at the end. And uh, my face melted eating those. They were so good. They were amazing. I mean, to work on a, a film set that is run by some of the best bakers in town and just randomly have baskets of delicious baked goods going around. That the camera work was terrible because they're all bakers, <laughs> but the food was great. Never do a movie with just bakers. They don't know how to make movies, <laughs> but the, the, the catering is phenomenal. It was so good. It was so good. Um, um, all right, I all think right we so have, we've got our cookie. We've got a cookie. We got to open up our business. We've got a little and rapid, we get fire to play game. rapid fire game. All this right. or that. This or that. They're always trying to make me choose here. You can never have both. It's so cruel. <laughs> uh, very divisive game, but let's see. So I'm going to read the first one, okay. and then you can read the second <laughs> one. What I'm going to do is come in with the third, and then you jump on the fourth. I'll be on number five. <laughs> got and it. if you're following the pattern, that's you on six. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to start rapid fire. Foosball or a game of pool? Foosball. Game of <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> game of pool. Um, pool. I, I I'm going pool. with pool. I'm a pool player. Uh, FaceTime or talk on the phone? FaceTime. Really? Yeah, I don't like talking on the phone. I like the it, well, it depends on the situation. You can answer the phone in any I feel like it's a little phone call. I'm going to say phone. It's a long way to wow. Get to that. Wow. I really just had to say one word. I could have said phone. Um, run your own business or be a PR executive. Run my own business. Run my own business. It's a cookie business where all we do oh, is right. FaceTime phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you say you'd run your own business? Run my own business. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Indulge in a pumpkin spice cake or sip on a pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin spice latte. I'm on a hunger strike for this one. I'm going to take the fifth. I'm not, I'm going to, what? I don't want you don't either. Want either of I don't want pumpkin in any of my food. What are you talking about? Pumpkin's not a food. It's something you that's carve in Halloween. That's all of you. Pick some, what else do you like? That's all right. Okay. I like a good spice cake. Okay. You can have spice cake. I don't want pumpkin spice cake Just though. spice cake. That's, you, we, that, that works. I just this. like cake with spices on it. That's it. Okay. Very normal. Okay. <laughs> Go on a hayride or jump in a pile of leaves. Oh, a hayride. Here's the thing. My back is just not, <laughs> I can't do jump in a pile of leaves anymore. I don't have the back for it. I would jump on a hayride. You would. <laughs> uh, All right. Who's jumping in a pile of leaves at 43 years old? Not this guy. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Ha! Oh! <laughs> that's, that's it. Dad, yeah. Okay. Stroll. Stroll through a pumpkin patch or walk walk through a corn maze. Well, what's the difference between strolling and walking? Zip, bitty, doo, da. And the other one's very purposeful through the maze. I don't want to have to find my way out of the corn. No, I'm going to I'm gonna stroll. Zippity doo da. I'm going to sing zippity doo da. Stroll through a pumpkin, through a pumpkin patch. You're not even there for the pumpkins. You just. Bop, you don't like pumpkins. See what have them remove all the pumpkins. Yeah, get the pumpkins out. Just give me the patch. <laughs> Bring your gum boots because those are muddy. Um, okay. <laughs> I want to go back. I think I'd rather just sip a pumpkin latte than stroll through the pumpkin bed. I'm Mr. Pumpkin. That's my new dating profile app. Miss Johnny, Johnny Pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> my inbox is really Johnny empty. Johnny Pumpkin Stroll. All right. Let's wrap this up. Johnny Pumpkin Stroll. No responses. Oh. Another day of zero. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today we cannot wait for you to watch the premiere of our original movie dating the delaney it's so true tune in on saturday august 20th at 8 7 central only on hallmark channel and we clearly had so much fun making this together That's and true. we will also be live tweeting at the same time um, that the movie airs and we hope that you will um, watch and tweet along with us using hashtag Dating the Delaney's. Hashtag dating the Delaney's. Be there. We'll be there. We hope you uh, enjoy. We're excited to see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.